discover the charm of ancient China in a modernized city museum. Experience the ingenuity of a high-tech long-range weapon system dating back to ancient times. Marvel at an exquisitely artistic night goods. Travel over a thousand years back in time to explore burial items that have transformed into masterpieces showcasing China's ceramic craftsmanship. Witness the collaboration of Italian missionary Matteo Ricci in the creation of China's very first mechanically self-playing clock. Stand in or before the remarkably intact city wall, standing strong for over 950 years, a rare sight even in China. And there's more, a wealth of priceless artifacts beyond enumeration. These cultural treasures don't grace the grand stages of cities like Beijing or Shanghai. Instead, they find their home in a museum nestled in a third-tier city in southern China, precisely in Jiaoqing, Guangdong province. A few days ago, I had the chance to visit Jiaoqing, attending a conference and seizing the opportunity to explore the city's museum. Jiaoqing, with its population of just over 4 million, may seem like a smaller city compared to the giants like Chongqing, Beijing, Shanghai, Chengdu, and Guangzhou, each boasting over 20 million inhabitants. What took me by surprise was the remarkable display of historical artifacts in this relatively modest-sized city. Each piece is a priceless gem. Despite my tight schedule, I managed to carve out a little over an hour to explore. Though my time was limited, I carefully selected 10 pieces that I found personally captivating and engaging, and I'd love to share them with all of you. Before arriving at the museum, our path led through an ancient commercial street. Word has it that the government is planning a revitalization project, temporarily suspending business activities in the area. Before long, we reached our destination. Alright, let's kick things off with something really captivating, a piece of history that's got quite a twist, an official seal from the year 1648. This seal carries the changes of its time. Imagine this, the Ming dynasty had given way to the Qing dynasty, yet some descendants of the Ming royal family managed to set up a brief independent rule in Jiaoqing, known as the Southern Ming. Back then, the system of officials was divided into nine major ranks, with each rank further split into chief and sub levels. Among them, the chief first rank official is the highest level, and the sub ninth rank official is the lowest level. The crux here is that this official seal belonged to a low ranking official, like a sub seventh rank official type. Picture this the official seal, made of copper and square in shape, bears the official's title. He's the head of the civilian department responsible for document management in a military agency. This official seal, it's practically a time-traveling witness, a cultural gem. It gives us a sneak peek into the way society was structured, the political system of the day, and the layers of officials with varying degrees of authority. Think of it as unwrapping a totally unique historical scroll. The second exhibit I'm thrilled to share with you is an absolute showstopper, the breathtaking crimson vase. Its vivid red hue is as inviting as a glass of rich red wine, exuding a deep and tranquil aura. Whether admired from afar or closely examined, it emanates an air of refined elegance and regal charm, with its graceful and smooth lines and an elegantly poised silhouette. This unique red ceramic vase goes by the distinctive name, Sacrifice Red Glaze. Its craftsmanship dates back to the Xuanda period of the Ming Dynasty, specifically between 1426 and 1435. Initially, these vases were used for sacrificial ceremony, hence the name, Sacrifice Red Glaze. The successful creation of such a vibrant red color was no small feat it required the exceptional skills, and extensive experience of craftsmen, all while being influenced by the environmental conditions. Firing under different climatic circumstances yielded varying results. The color of the ceremonial red glaze is derived from copper-based coloring agents, necessitating high temperature firing under reducing conditions. In the process of preparing the glaze, materials like gold, coral, and jade powder were often added, showcasing the extent to which no expense was spared. However, due to the challenge of controlling the reducing atmosphere during firing, the production often faced the risk of failure. As a result, a flawless ceremonial red glaze piece is exceedingly precious and priceless. The vase before us is a masterpiece from the Qing dynasty, and its exceptional quality undoubtedly places it among the ranks of priceless treasures. Let's now indulge in the mesmerizing beauty of the third exhibit, an official silver ingot from the Ming Dynasty. 
This silver ingot weighs a substantial 50 tails, equivalent to around 1900 grams by modern standards. This silver ingot isn't just attention grabbing, it's a tangible piece of history. The surface of the ingot is engraved with clear inscriptions, akin to its own birth certificate. First and foremost, it documents the place of its creation, a location known as Wabai County. This place name still exists today, situated around 300 kilometers away from Jiaoqing City. Secondly, the ingot specifies its purpose, for submission to the central court as tax silver for grain transportation. In simple terms, it refers to the tax payment that local authorities sent to the central government. The exact time is also meticulously noted as the 16th year of Chongzhen, which translates to the year 1643 in the Gregorian calendar. Lastly, the ingot also precisely states its weight, a perfect 50 tails. It's worth noting that similar Ming Dynasty silver ingots were once auctioned by a notable auction house, and the final hammer price reached a staggering 15.68 million Chinese yuan. This serves as ample proof of the precious value and far-reaching impact of these historical artifacts. And now, let me introduce you to the fourth featured exhibit right here, this uniquely shaped blue-green vase, inspired by the design of Jade Tsong from the Neolithic period. It skillfully combines circular and square elements, resembling the shape of the Jade Tsong, and its official name is the Imitation GE Glazed 8 Trigram Tsong Shaped Vase. At first glance, your attention will undoubtedly be drawn to the raised eight trigrams carved onto the vase's body. The eight trigrams form a metaphysical symbol composed of three sets of short and long lines, which are used to interpret various natural and social phenomena. It's a profound concept deeply rooted in ancient Chinese culture. The long lines represent yang, while the short lines represent yin. Using these two symbols, combined in parallel with the changing dynamics of nature's yin and yang, they form eight different patterns, known as the eight trigrams. These eight trigram symbols symbolize the fusion of cosmic energies and the inclusiveness of all things in nature. The imitation song GE Kills Blue-Green Glaze application makes the vase shimmer with a solemn elegance when illuminated by light and shadow. It's like a layer of mysterious veil, inviting you to delve into the creative minds of ancient artisans. Delicate crackled patterns resemble the traces of time, adding a unique texture to the vase. It's akin to a serene painting, telling the story of the profound changes of history and the beauty of passing time. This tsong-shaped vase is not just a historical artifact, it's a testament to art and wisdom intertwined. Here's another awe-inspiring masterpiece, a Qing Dynasty Dotsai Underglaze Copper Red Deer and Crane Double-Handled Vase. This double-handled vase isn't just a piece of porcelain, it's an extensive encyclopedia of Chinese culture. First, let's immerse ourselves in the magic of its colors. The bean green base resembles a lush forest, inviting us to embrace the embrace of nature. The underglaze copper red decorations on the vase depict a vivid landscape, showcasing elements like deer, cranes, and pine trees. It's so lifelike that we can almost sense the freshness of the woods and feel the rhythm of nature. The technique of underglaze copper red is a unique creation in Chinese ceramics. It combines the methods of blue and white porcelain and overglaze red decoration, resulting in a rich and vibrant effect. The blue and white employs cobalt as the main coloring agent, firing these intricate patterns onto porcelain and revealing a blue hue reminiscent of the clear sky under high temperature. Behind this porcelain lies a fascinating story of cobalt's heritage and innovation. Cobalt plays a significant role worldwide, serving as a vital ingredient for pigments and shining in the realm of glass craftsmanship. Venetian glassmakers, for instance, used cobalt to craft stunning blue glass cups, while China's cloisonne enamel, known as Jingtailin, employed the same technique over 500 years ago to create awe-inspiring metal artworks. It's worth noting that the deer and crane decorations on this vase carry profound symbolism. The deer symbolize prosperity and are often associated with the god of longevity, conveying wishes for a long and prosperous life. Cranes, on the other hand, are considered divine birds, linked with longevity and a symbol of auspiciousness. The pine tree represents immortality and evergreen vitality, leading us into a world full of hope and vitality. As you look at this porcelain anew, can you sense the emotional resonance and cultural heritage it carries? Check this out, this is China's very first mechanical self-ringing clock. 
This remarkable journey spans 440 years, starting way back in 1583 when an Italian named Imutio Ricci walked into this ancient city. Amidst the serene ambience of the Xianhua Temple, he collaborated with two local craftsmen to create a mesmerizing mechanical self-ringing clock. This astonishment wasn't merely about sound, it revolutionized the concept of time itself. China's millennia-old perception of time was overturned, ushering in a completely new chapter in history. This mechanical self-ringing clock carries within it an endless exchange and transformation of cultures. It's not just a timekeeping device, it's a witness to China's modern history, documenting the fusion of Eastern and Western cultures and the passage of time. The Jiaoqing mechanical self-ringing clock didn't just alter how time was perceived, it profoundly influenced the development of human society, marking the beginning of the modern world's historical journey. And now, here in 2023, we're fortunate to witness the resurrection of this magnificent marvel, meticulously replicated by Li Baoqing, the inheritor of Xiaoqing's self-ringing clock craftsmanship. The Xiaoqing self-ringing clock isn't merely a clock, it's a tale of east-west interaction and integration, a story of cultural exchange. Feel the weight of its significance as we relive this iconic moment in history. And here we are, introducing the seventh piece today. Let's journey through the mists of time and step into the glorious days of the Tang Dynasty, where we encounter a precious cultural treasure, the Tang tricolor glazed ceramic figurine. In the distant realm of the Tang Dynasty, ceramic art reached an astounding zenith. The Tang tricolor glazed ceramics, with its unique multicolored glazes, stands out in the history of art. Within these vibrant hues, the interplay of yellow, green, and white resembles a magical painting, breathing life into each creation. It's an extraordinary art form, a testament to the emotional inheritance that transcends eras. The term, Tang tricolor, isn't confined to only three colors, it's a vivid cultural tapestry. Within the Tang tombs, we've uncovered an array of figurines and sculptures. They come in monochrome, two-tone, and even multicolored splendor. Whether it's the yellow, green, and blue tricolor combination or more intricate hues, each piece stands as a testament to masterful artistry. From small horses, domestic fowl, and figurines to enigmatic mythical creatures, they all showcase the artisan's ingenuity and creativity, allowing us to experience the essence of Tang culture. The Tang dynasty marked a period of prosperity and cultural diversity. The nation was strong, industries thrived, yet a trend of lavish burial practices also emerged. The Tang tricolor ceramics, as funerary objects, were officially regulated and had specific quantities assigned based on the officials' ranks. Amidst these resplendent ceramic artifacts, we witness not only the Tang people's contemplation of life and time but also their profound love for art. Let's immerse ourselves in the vibrant colors of Tang culture and travel through time to appreciate the intricate emotions and artistic expressions preserved within these exquisite Tang tricolor glazed ceramic figurines. Let's focus our attention on a legendary artifact from the Eastern Jin Dynasty, a green glazed ceramic tiger chamber pot, 317 to 420 AD. You might wonder, why was a chamber pot given such a unique name? The story goes back to a general from the Western Han Dynasty named Li Guang. He once engaged in a life and death battle with a fierce tiger and, after an intense struggle, managed to subdue it. To commemorate his victory, he had his craftsmen create a container resembling the shape of the defeated tiger, specifically used for urination, as a mocking gesture towards the tiger. Over time, this container came to be known as, Tiger, becoming an elegant name for a chamber pot. Interestingly, in the Tang Dynasty, to avoid offending the grandfather of Emperor Gaozu, Li Yuan, Tiger, was changed to, Horse, and as time went on, its shape evolved into a slightly barrel-like form, so now the Chinese people call the toilet, horse bucket. This green glazed ceramic, tiger, chamber pot from the Eastern Jin Dynasty bears witness to the whimsy, creativity, and unique interpretations of life by ancient people. It reminds us that throughout the river of history, human wisdom and humor have never ceased to flow. The ninth captivating exhibit we're about to explore is the Han Dynasty Bronze Crossbow Trigger Mechanism, 202-220 BC. The crossbow stands as an exceptional achievement of ancient engineering, a mechanized archery weapon that embodies the wisdom of antiquity. The Han Dynasty Bronze Crossbow Trigger Mechanism, a precious legacy of ancient Chinese military technology, is now presented before us. 
What makes the bronze crossbow mechanism ingenious is its clever fusion of the bow, the crossbow arms, and the trigger, enabling precise shooting. Imagine, as the bowstring is drawn taut, the arrow set in the groove, sights aligned on the target, the trigger pulled, the bowstring recoiling, the arrow launches like lightning, traversing a distance of 800 meters, breaking through the enemy's defenses. This is a design born of exquisite craftsmanship, a pinnacle of Han Dynasty engineering. The crafting of the bronze crossbow mechanism undeniably represents a masterpiece of ancient metallurgical technology. The bronze components of the mechanism, such as the Guai, Hook, Wai, Tu, Xian Dao, Suspended Knife, and Wang Shan, Sighting Blade, form its intricate and precise structure. They function as a sophisticated mechanism, seamlessly blending power and accuracy, propelling arrows with pinpoint precision. This level of mastery has transcended the limitations of its era, standing as a remarkable testament to ancient engineering expertise. The final item I'm particularly excited to recommend is located outside the museum, Xiaoqing Song Dynasty City Wall. This ancient wall, also known as Xiaoqing's Little Great Wall, stands as a unique historical heritage of China. Imagine spanning a millennium, the Song Dynasty City Wall first emerged in 1053, seemingly as a guardian of time. Despite the tests of rain and wind over the centuries, this wall stands tall and resolute, holding its ground and tracing the memories of history. Throughout China, it's rare to find a Song Dynasty brick city wall like Xiaoqing's, with its main structure and surrounding city largely intact. This wall is a treasure of the rarest kind and a living testament to Xiaoqing's historical culture. The city wall bears witness to ancient civilization. It originated during the agricultural era, initially built as a protective barrier against wild beasts and external threats. However, with the passage of time, the significance of city walls deepened, making them an integral part of urban life. City walls played multiple roles in Chinese history. Primarily, they served a defensive function. The sturdy structure of the city wall, along with features like watchtowers and arrow towers, defended the city's security, making it difficult for invaders to breach. Simultaneously, city walls aided in managing and controlling internal city order, demarcating city boundaries, and maintaining social stability. Economic and trade development was closely intertwined with city wall protection. Commerce and trade within the city walls flourished, as the walls provided a secure environment for merchants, attracting people to engage in exchanges. The city wall is not merely a structure, it embodies the city's image and symbolizes its cultural heritage, historical continuity, and prosperity. It also serves as a landmark, enabling easy identification and orientation within the city. Behind the city wall lies a profound social cohesion. Constructing a city wall required significant manpower and resources, fostering close collaboration among city residents, enhancing social unity, and a sense of belonging. This collaboration has given rise to this magnificent city wall, a true marvel. Today, we embarked on a captivating expedition through a quaint town, unraveling the tapestry of cultural heritage and human intellect woven over millennia. Our voyage led us to remarkable artifacts that offer profound insights. As we stood before the venerable Jiaoqing city walls, we glimpsed the tenacity and inclusivity that shaped this urban landscape. The resplendent, sacrifice red glaze, ceramics revealed the artistry and unwavering commitment of master craftsmen. Exploring items such as official seals and silver ingots provided an intricate understanding of the convergence of power, taxation, and intrinsic value. These exhibits transcend mere physical objects. They serve as portals to bygone eras, transporting us to different epochs. Each artifact encapsulates the ethos of its time, the ingenuity of its creators, and the chronicles of human achievement. They have borne witness to societal shifts, the oscillation of human sentiment, and embody the spirit of countless generations. When we look at these ancient utensils, we may be able to feel the passage of time and the colorful life. Every turn and gaze is an affectionate embrace with history and culture. They make us not just travelers, but witnesses to human intelligence and emotion. Let us collectively commemorate these historical imprints, safeguarding and perpetuating this invaluable cultural bequest. May the warmth, reverence, and introspection evoked by these exhibits resonate within us, nurturing our aspirations for a brighter future. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all who have accompanied me on this journey, lending their attentive ears. Let us, together, pay homage to the annals of history and embrace the luminous prospects of the days ahead.